Oh, he's on another business trip. Yeah, sure I miss him. But I've got so much to do preparing for my new film and reading some other scripts. Well, being left alone in the house with Dylan does bother me. Hold on a second, will you? Dylan! I'll have to call you back. Okay, bye. I know, but it's your bedtime. Um, let's go back to the kitchen, Dylan. Oh, Jeff. Hi, I'm glad you're home. Yeah, it's Lee. Could you come over? Well, Gary's not home, and... I'm alone here with Dylan. I think I hear someone outside. Yes, I have a gun, but I, I, I don't know how to use it. Okay, hurry, will you? Thanks. Good thing it's not bear country. Probably just some dog looking for a meal. Oh. Jeff, I was so scared. Is that the box you keep your gun in? Yeah. We keep it for protection in the bedroom, but, well, to be honest, I don't really know how to use it. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm doing a film right now that calls for some fancy gun work, and I'm getting a few pointers from a guy named Mike Dalton. Maybe I can get his partner to help you out. Oh, that sounds great. Are you taking classes? No, nah, I'm just learning some tricks. But I'm sure they can show you anything you want to know. I'll be up late working. I'll keep an eye on your place. If there are any more problems, call me. OK. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate it. No problemo. As soon as I get home, I'll call you and give the instructor's number. OK. Bye. I'll call him first thing in the morning. OK. Thanks. What you just witnessed is an incident that could happen in any number of homes. Fortunately, it was a false alarm. Hello, I'm Gerald McRaney. I've been shooting guns most of my life. I've always made it a point to learn as much as I can about the proper handling of guns and gun safety. If you own a gun, or even if you merely live in a house where someone else owns one, it's essential that you're familiar with its operation. A gun is simply a machine. Like any other piece of mechanical equipment, it isn't the machine that can hurt you. It's the operator, particularly one unskilled in its use. As an actress, Lee has appeared many times in feature films and television shows, occasionally using a gun. But this does not mean she's been trained in handling firearms properly. So, she made the proper decision in wanting firearms training. The experts Jeff lined up are Mickey Fowler and Mike Dalton, world champions in pistol competition. Together, they operate International Shootists Incorporated, one of the best shooting schools in the world. For Lee, that's perfect, because expert instruction is the key to confidence and safety. Lee didn't waste any time. She got started first thing the next day. Lee didn't know what to expect at a firing range, having never been to one before. She discovered there were people of all ages and types interested in the sport of shooting. She had no idea that the subject of firearms covered such a vast array of equipment and accessories to accommodate the skills one learns. The local range was spacious and clean, with large displays of guns, ammunition, and shooting accessories. As she watched shooters on the range through a large safety glass window, she wasn't sure what she was in for. You must be Lee Purcell. Oh, hi. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm Mickey Fowler. Oh, that's okay, Mickey. 
It's just my first time in a shooting range, and I guess I'm a little nervous. Don't worry about that. I think you're going to enjoy this course. So shall we get started? Classroom's right over there. I'm ready. What kind of gun do you have at home, Link? I don't know. It's, it's a 22 or a 25. It doesn't look like any of these. Right. Well, we'll start with the basics and work from there. We'll be covering several things in your course. Safety, types of guns, ammunition, and marksmanship fundamentals. Maybe the first thing we should go over are the basic types of firearms. Have any idea what they are? I don't know. Rifles and pistols? Close. There's three basic types. The shotgun, the rifle, and the pistol. This is a shotgun. It's used for sports like skeet shooting and hunting. Now, the place where the bullet exits the barrel on any gun is called the muzzle, which brings up safety rule number one. Always point the muzzle in a safe direction. That makes a lot of sense. This is the type of ammunition it uses, a shotgun shell. As you can see, it's packed with small pellets. When the shotgun is fired and the pellets exit the muzzle, they scatter and cover a large area. That's why a shotgun is sometimes referred to as a scatter gun. Oh, yeah, I remember my dad calling it that. This is a rifle. It's used for sports like hunting and competitive shooting. The rifle uses a different type of ammunition than the shotgun, a single projectile. This is a dummy cartridge. We never use live ammunition in the classroom. Now let's talk about why you came here today. Pistols. The word pistol always reminds me of the old westerns. Know what you mean. Or they're sometimes referred to as handguns because they're supported only with the hands. Or sidearms because they can be carried in a holster on the side of your body. That one is a lot different than ours at home. Right. There's two types of pistols. From what you told me, your gun is what's called a semi-automatic. But first we're going to take up the revolver, which is what I'm holding. For anyone just starting out shooting, we suggest a revolver. Why? They're simpler to operate and more easily understood. Oh, I see. You know, I've always wondered about something. Why is it called a revolver? Because the cylinder, where the cartridges go, revolves. The part surrounding the trigger is called the trigger guard. The main body of a pistol is called the frame. And where your hand holds the gun is the grip. This is the front sight, and this is the rear sight. Again, this is the cylinder and the cylinder release. When you pull the trigger, the cylinder turns to line up a fresh cartridge with the barrel. At the same time, the hammer cocks back. At the end of the trigger pull, the hammer falls, allowing the firing pin to hit the back of the cartridge, setting it off and firing the bullet. Like I said before, the place where the bullet exits the barrel is called the muzzle. Hmm, huh. that's basically pretty simple. You're right. Now that you know the basic parts of the revolver, we'll go over the two other most important safety rules. Remember, the first rule was always be muzzle conscious. Always point the muzzle in a safe direction. Right. Rule number two, never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Oh, that's logical. Right. Now, we call this section of the gun the action, which brings up safety rule number three. Always keep the action open and the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. You try it. Close the cylinder. Now push the cylinder release and open the action. Very good. Now hand it back to me. That's easy. I have a question. Could a loaded gun go off if you drop it? That depends on the gun. Let me show you. In this particular model, there's a block that rests between the hammer and the frame when the gun is at rest. It's designed to prevent an accidental discharge of the gun if it's dropped or if the hammer is hit. This may vary on other makes of guns. You should always refer to the owner's manual if you're uncertain. It doesn't seem so 
threatening when you break it down like that. I've heard that a gun can just go off laying around the house. Well, that's like a car just starting up, sitting out in the driveway. <sighs> the things that you hear and read. Right. Now, there's two different types of hammer and trigger arrangements, single action or double action. This is a double action revolver, which means the trigger has two functions. It cocks the hammer and releases it. With a single action revolver, the trigger has only one function. It releases the hammer, so you have to first cock it with your thumb. On the double action revolver, you can operate it single action if you want. Tell me about that one, the semi-automatic. That's just what we're about to cover. Oh, good. What's the difference between them other than the way they look? Good question. Remember where the cartridges go on a revolver? Oh, on this one, the bullet holder comes out. It's called a magazine. We put the cartridges in the magazine and insert it into the magazine well. First of all, the semi-automatic has ammunition inside the grip in the magazine. It has a single chamber, which is the rear part of the barrel. The barrel is enclosed by the slide, which moves back and forth each time the gun is being fired, cocking the hammer and reloading the gun each time. This is why it's an automatic. In other words, it does this automatically. Why is it called a semi-automatic? Well, a fully automatic gun would keep firing as long as you hold the trigger back. Oh, like a machine gun. Exactly. A semi-automatic means you have to pull the trigger for each shot, one at a time. It's referred to as an automatic, or auto for short, since it's self-loading. Oh, it loads itself after each shot is fired. You're picking this up quickly, Lee. Now, you should understand the controls and safety features on autos will also vary from make to make. This auto is a Smith & Wesson Model 645. It has three additional features the revolver doesn't have. A thumb safety to prevent you from putting it into operation until you're ready, even if you pull the trigger accidentally. The other is the slide stop, which keeps the slide back and open. After the last round is fired, the slide stop keeps the slide from closing, letting you see the gun is empty. The third feature is simply the magazine release. Kind of like the cylinder release on the revolver? That's right. To load the auto, you insert the magazine, pull the slide all the way back, and let it go. See that it's also cocked and ready to fire. On this model, you must immediately put on the thumb safety, unless you intend to fire the gun right away. When you put on the thumb safety, it will disengage the firing pin inside, allowing the hammer to fall without firing the gun. This is a double action automatic, so to fire the gun, you simply take the safety off, and pull the trigger, which both cocks the hammer and fires the gun. On a single action, such as this Colt, you can only cock it by pulling back the hammer. What makes the slide go back and forth when you fire? Let me show you with this double action Smith & Wesson Auto. When you let the slide forward, it takes a cartridge from the top of the magazine and inserts it into the chamber. When you pull the trigger, the hammer falls forward, hitting the firing pin, which fires the cartridge. The backward force of the cartridge pushes the slide back, which ejects the empty shell, recocks the hammer, then the spring inside the slide moves it forward chambering the next cartridge this is known as a complete cycle this entire action takes but a fraction of a second you know the gun we have at home is an auto what makes it different from these your pistol is a 22 caliber and this one is a 45 caliber one major difference has to do with the size of the cartridge so there's an obvious difference in the size of the guns. Take a look at this 22 Auto compared to the 45. Oh, I see what you mean. A 22 is made to shoot a much smaller bullet, and that gets us into ammunition. Let's go out to the lobby, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
So, now Lee knows the basics of how pistols work, both revolvers and semi-automatics. As you've seen, the more comfortable she becomes with them, the less complicated they seem to her. It's important to understand that the operations and features on firearms can vary greatly from make to make. Before you handle any gun, make sure you understand how it works mechanically, and always refer to the owner's manual. Now Lee will learn about the caliber of pistols, basically referring to the sizes of ammunition they shoot, and the two different types of cartridges. There's two types of cartridges, center fire and rim fire. The 22 cartridge that most people are familiar with is a rim fire, which means the firing pin hits a soft bottom rim of the case, setting off the priming compound inside, which ignites the powder. A center fire cartridge, like this one, has a primer in the center of the base. When the primer is hit with a firing pin, it flashes inside, igniting the powder. The powder burns instantaneously, creating expanding gas forcing the bullet down the barrel and out at very high speed. Some people think a bullet explodes out and a gun could blow up. With proper knowledge and maintenance and correct ammunition, that's not going to happen. You mentioned caliber before. What exactly is caliber? Let me explain. This is a 45 automatic cartridge used in the auto we just looked at. The 45 refers to the bullet. Take a look at the chart. Let me guess. The bullet is four-tenths of an inch across? Oh, actually, 45 hundredths of an inch across? That's exactly right. Just the bullet. Then a 22 would be 22 one-hundredths of an inch in diameter? You got it. With a 22 and a 45, that's essentially correct. There's exceptions, but all you have to remember is to use ammunition compatible with your gun. If you're not sure, just look on the bottom of the case. You'll find the caliber stamped there. 357 Magnum? What's that? The names given to ammunition come from the type of case that is used. For example, the 38 Special cartridge and the 357 Magnum use the same 38 caliber bullet, which actually measures 357 thousandths of an inch. The Magnum refers to a more powerful round with extra powder making the difference. The 357 Magnum is just a 38 special case made slightly longer and thicker to prevent someone from accidentally loading it into a revolver made only for 38 special. See that? It won't fit. Mm -hmm. A 357 revolver is more strongly constructed to handle the more powerful magnum round. So you can use a lighter 38 special cartridge in a 357 revolver, but not vice versa. Why would I use 38s in a 357? Since they're less powerful, they're more pleasant and comfortable to shoot, and they're also less expensive. Well, that's good to know. Well, there are also calibers that are designated in millimeters. A popular one is the 9mm auto. It originated in Europe where they use the metric system. What's the purpose of so many different types of guns and ammunition, Mickey? Well, you'll see as we go along. There's lots of things. Hunting, competition shooting, home defense, personal preference, or just what's comfortable to shoot. New shooters can easily encounter confusion about different types of ammunition. Now that Lee understands some basic differences, it'll be much less likely that she'll make a mistake and use the wrong ammunition. The subject of ammunition can be quite extensive and requires some study. If you're not sure what to use in your gun, look for the caliber notation stamped on the barrel of the gun and use only the ammunition that matches it. If you still have a question, ask your local gunsmith or dealer. Now, let's get back to Mickey and Lee as Lee gets a few more tips. This time from Mickey's partner, Mike Dalton. Lee, this is my partner, Mike Dalton. Nice to meet you, Mike. It's my pleasure, Lee. So how did you do in the classroom? I think I got it all, but I guess I'll find out when I do some shooting. She needs to pick out a revolver to use on the range. But first, I think you could explain some differences in ammunition to her. I thought you just did that. Well, there's a little more to it. But you're in expert hands, Lee. I'll go put away everything in the classroom while Mike answers all your questions. Lee, did you know that different types of bullets can be used in the same gun? Oh, brother. Well, don't worry. We'll take it one step at a time. That would be helpful. Okay, here goes. Here's some examples of different types of bullets. 
This is a full metal jacket design. The lead bullet is encased in a copper jacket. It's made to pass through its target with very little loss of energy. Well, what kind of a bullet would I use for home defense? A soft nose bullet like this, one that has a lead partially exposed, or a hollow point would be a good choice. Both are designed to transfer their energy to the target upon impact. What does that mean exactly? Basically more stopping power. I see. How about those other bullets? The one on the left is called a wad cutter. It's used for shooting at paper targets. It uses less powder for reduced recoil and is very accurate. The other is a semi wad cutter, which is a heavier, multi-purpose target bullet. Boy, there's a lot to remember about ammunition. Well, there's a simple way to handle it. When you go to buy ammunition, just look at the end flap on the box. 38 special semi wad cutter, 158 grains. 158 grains of what? Lead. That's the weight of the bullet. Bullets come in various weights. But generally speaking, the lighter the bullets, the less the recoil. Oh. Can I use these in a 38 revolver? Exactly. And that's basically all you need to know about ammunition. But if you ever become confused, just ask the dealer that you're buying it from. That's very helpful information. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Now Lee has firm grounding in the basics. She's learned the three different types of guns, shotguns, rifles, and pistols. She's learned the parts of both a revolver and an automatic. And now she knows a good deal about the selection of proper ammunition. Most importantly, she's learned the three basic safety rules. Now, if you find you have any questions about anything we've covered so far, go back and review it before we continue. And now comes the last step before Lee goes out on the range to learn shooting fundamentals, picking out the proper accessories and a gun she feels comfortable with. In helping Lee select a gun, Mickey has considered several things. It should be of a caliber that's comfortable for her to shoot. It should have a barrel length that isn't too heavy for her to handle. And the grip size should be right for the size of her hand. With that in mind, let's see what Lee decides on. Mike and I picked out some guns for you to try, Lee. You might be comfortable with either one of these. Go ahead and try them. That's a Colt Trooper. Yeah, this one's okay. Oh, I like this one. What is it? It's a Smith & Wesson Model 10. 38 caliber with a four inch barrel. I think I'd like to try that one. That's what's important. What feels comfortable to you? There are so many different types of guns. Can I try some of the others? Sure, no problem. I have a lot of different guns out on the range you can try. I just wanted you to pick one to stay with while you learn the fundamentals. Good. Well, now we need to get you some accessories, starting with safety glasses. We never shoot without wearing protective glasses. They keep the dust out of your eyes as well as providing protection. If you wore prescription glasses, you could just wear those, as long as they had safety lenses. These feel OK. How do I look? Looks pretty good to me. Me too. Well, hey, guys, that girl's got to be fashionable, you know. Well, in that case, check out these earmuffs. They'll protect your eardrums while practicing. Proper ear protection is a must. What are these? We have one at home. It's called a gun rug. It's basically for the protection of the gun while carrying or storing it. Once you've learned your shooting basics, you may want to have a holster for convenience. These are made of molded leather or padded fabric, and both will fit the gun you picked. You need to pick a holster that's best suited for your needs. That belt is contoured for women, and these leather holsters are precision fitted to the individual guns. I'll try the leather holster with the contour belt. Looks like we're all set. Let's go to the outdoor range. Hope you have a good time shooting, Lee. Thanks for everything, Mike. People who shoot guns regularly for recreation and improvement of their shooting skills have other basic rules they follow to ensure shooting safety. Like the three handling rules Lee has already learned, the remaining seven were standardized by the National Rifle Association, and they're available in pamphlet form. We'll see Lee out on the shooting range in a moment, and she'll have these rules explained to her by Mickey. Now here they are for your safety information. We'll begin by reviewing the first three the first of which is the golden rule of gun safety. Rule number one, always point the muzzle in a safe direction. Number two, keep
Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. There is a natural tendency to place your finger on the trigger when holding a gun, but trigger guards are made to enable you to hold the gun comfortably with your finger off the trigger. Number three, keep the action open and the gun unloaded until ready to shoot. Now here are the remaining seven safety rules that apply to shooting. Number four, know how the gun operates. That reiterates the need for expert training. You can inquire at your local sporting goods shop or contact the National Rifle Association for the nearest certified volunteer instructor. Number five, be sure your gun and ammunition are compatible. If you're not sure, ask an expert. Don't guess. Number six, carry only one caliber of ammunition when shooting. Smaller ammunition can be accidentally placed in a gun chamber designed for larger ammunition, creating an obstruction and a very hazardous situation. Number seven, be sure of your target and what's beyond. This means observing your prospective area of fire before you shoot. It's simple. Think first, shoot second. Number eight, wear eye and ear protection as appropriate. Guns are loud. They can also emit debris and hot gases that could cause eye injury. For these reasons, safety glasses and ear protection are recommended apparel. Number nine, don't mix alcohol or drugs with shooting. It goes without saying. Normal mental and physical reactions are impaired, so just don't do it. Number 10, be aware that circumstances may require additional rules unique to a particular situation. For example, every gun range has its own set of rules. Know what they are before you begin. If you own a gun, you're required to think. Remember that. And remember that you are the one responsible for gun safety. Let's get back to our story. Well, the first position we always teach is the bench rest position. For a beginning shooter, it's easier to learn how to shoot accurately with some support under your hands. That's what the bench and the sandbags will provide. Oh. How much do we actually have to cover before I can start shooting? There's five fundamentals to shooting a pistol. Here's some written material you can refer to. There's shooting position which is simply the position of your body and the position of the handgun during the act of shooting. Next is shot preparation, in which we deal with two things, aiming or the process of lining your gun up with a target, and sight alignment, which involves the relationship between your eye and the rear and front sights of the gun. We'll also cover breath control in this step, which minimizes unnecessary body movements. Then we have sight alignment control, the process of maintaining proper sight alignment until the shot is completed. This is a critical fundamental. After that is trigger control, which is very important, and the final step of follow through, in which you learn to maintain your shooting position immediately following the shot. Follow through like in a golf swing or when you're bowling? You got it. Oh, seems like we have a lot to cover, Mickey. Well, we'll just have to. I know. Take it one thing at a time. First, you face the target with both arms fully extended, straight out directly in front of your face. Rest your wrists on the sandbag for support. Now, make a fist with your right hand. Since you're right-handed, the right hand is called your shooting hand, and the left hand is your non-shooting hand. Now, wrap your left hand around your right, locking the thumbs together. The reason we do this is for safety. We don't want somebody getting their weak hand thumb behind the slide on an automatic. Plus, locking the thumbs has a bonus of adding control to the shot. Is this right? That's fine. This grip will suit the semi-automatic as well as the revolver. Now let's do it with an unloaded gun. We'll be operating the gun without ammunition, which is called dry firing. The first thing we'll cover is aiming, and we'll focus on sight alignment. Now close the action and have a look down the sights of your gun. When you've got the proper sight alignment, you'll see the front sight razor sharp. We're going to start with a blank target, so you learn to focus your attention on the sights, not the target. Right. The rear sight looks slightly blurred, and the target looks a bit blurred, too. There should be an equal amount of light showing on either side as you look through the rear sight to the front sight. OK. Got it. And the top of the front sight should be flush with an imaginary line across the top of the rear sight. Then. You center that line on where you want the bullet to hit. 
How's that look? It's just the way you described it. Okay. Now let's dry fire the gun, which is aligning the sights and squeezing the trigger using an unloaded gun. From the time you start squeezing the trigger, it should take no longer than six to eight seconds before firing the shot. During this period, you should try not to breathe because every breath makes your body move slightly. Okay, go ahead and try it. How is that? Very good. But remember, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Oh. Did you maintain your sight alignment? Yes. I hope I can when we're using real cartridges. Well, that's why we're dry firing first. Okay. That covers the basics of breath control and sight alignment control, too. The critical point of sight alignment control is to remember that it must be maintained during the process of a controlled trigger pull. So let's move on to trigger control. But what's so important about that? You just pull it, don't you? It's very important, actually. The key is to pull the trigger straight back directly to the rear with a smooth and continuous equal pressure. You'll see in a minute when we load the gun how a wrong trigger pull can easily ruin a shot. That has to do with follow through the last of the five fundamentals. Do you have to keep the gun from recoiling? Not exactly. The primary thing is it's impossible to know precisely when the bullet leaves the barrel. So you have to maintain your position or follow through to do as little as possible to disturb the side alignment. Try it a few times double action, just pulling the trigger. I think I'm ready to shoot now. You're right. That's next. But now let's take a break. What you've just seen are the five fundamentals of shooting. Shooting position, shot preparation, sight alignment control, trigger control, and follow through. It's very important you have these covered before you begin shooting. Also, some people may get tired after absorbing a lot of information and practicing as much as we've seen Lee do. If you find that happening, wait another day before you begin shooting. And be sure that you understand the fundamentals before you continue. Now, let's watch Lee as she gets ready to fire her first shot. To start with, we're going to load one cartridge at a time and see how you handle the gun. Okay, what do I do? Well, push on the cylinder release and swing out the cylinder. Check to make sure the cylinder is empty. And go ahead and push the ejector rod. That's how you unload the empty case after you fire. Now, holding the gun in your left hand, insert the cartridge in one of the chambers. Then close the cylinder, making sure the loaded chamber lines up just to the right of the barrel. Is that because the cylinder turns counterclockwise? Well, with this revolver, that's correct. Some models turn the other way. Okay, remember the fundamentals. Aim for the middle of the target and fire when ready. That's not bad. Remember your follow through. Okay. Unload the gun, and we'll try this again. How's that? Perfect. Always keep your eye on the back of the cylinder when unloading. Sometimes an empty shell can hang up in a cylinder if you're not careful. And be sure always to keep the barrel pointed downrange when loading and unloading. We'll do this single shot exercise at least five times, so fire when ready. In this exercise, we'll load five cartridges and manually cock the hammer for each shot. 
purpose of firing five rounds in a row is to show you that your shots form a group. All right. That should be interesting. There. Good. It's not a bad first crew. Empty the gun, and we'll do this a few more times, Lee. I didn't exactly hit the center every time. Don't worry about it. We can handle that. Let's fire a few more shots single action, then we'll begin shooting double action, just pulling the trigger to both cock and fire the gun. Sounds great. Can I look at my target first? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it looks like Jeff. How you doing? Just fine. Did you bring the gun you're going to be using in the film? I sure did. It's a beauty, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see Lee over there. How's she doing? Well, Mickey says she's a good student. They've been at it a while, so I imagine she's doing pretty well by now. I like that. Well, it's lucky I'm a natural shot. Oh, really? Natural shot, huh? Yeah, come on, I'll show you. <laughs> the first thing to remember in a standing position is to never cross the firing line with your pistol. That applies any time you're on the range. It's another aspect of being muzzle conscious. Anything here is OK. Here isn't. Oh, that way the instructor lives a long life, huh? Right. OK, the next thing on the agenda is the standing position. There are two basic types, the single-handed stance and the two-handed stance. Let me show you the two-handed standing position. Watch how I do it and follow along. We'll do it first without a gun. OK, what do I do first? OK, put your feet shoulder width apart. With your body weight distributed equally on both feet. You should be leaning slightly forward. Now extend your arms fully in front of your face. That's good. It's like the bench position, only standing. Pretty much. Now let's try it holding a gun. OK. This position is also called an isosceles, because your arms form an isosceles triangle. OK, holster the gun. There's a variation of the two-handed position called the weaver stance. It was developed by a San Diego County Sheriff's deputy named Jack Weaver. As you can see, my feet are at a 45 degree angle to the target at shoulder width. My right arm is straight and my left arm is bent at the elbow, pushing with the right and pulling with the left. The weaver looks interesting, but I think I prefer the isosceles for now. You know, Mickey, you're being very thorough about all this. If I had tried to learn to shoot on my own, I would have wasted a lot of time. Thanks. Well, you've seen there's a lot more to shooting than just pulling the trigger. Some people think they know all this naturally, but it just isn't so. Hi, Lee. Learn anything? Oh, more than I imagined. How about you, Jeff? No, we haven't started yet. Hi, right, Mickey. We're going to go over here and do some fast draw practice. I guess that's kind of the advanced side, huh? Uh, not really. We just don't want to disturb Mickey and Lee. I got you. See you guys later. What is it? It's just funny. You're a good student because you didn't come to us thinking you knew it all. That makes it a lot tougher. So how do you feel about what you've learned so far? Well, I'm not Annie Oakley yet, but I'm getting there. Great. Now let's take another break before we do any more shooting. OK.
Say, Mike. Yeah. I don't really know enough about this gun. Well, we can handle that, particularly since you've recognized that fact. Tell you what, let's go over the safety rules again. Good. I think I'm shaking slightly. You're probably holding the grip too tightly. Just relax slightly. You're right. That's much better. You have to try to control your side alignment before, during, and after you pull the trigger, right through the recoil. But I can't keep the side exactly like it is when I start. That's impossible. You're right. It is impossible. But by trying to hold the proper side alignment through the recoil, you won't disturb the path of the bullet as it exits the barrel. Your stance and grip will bring it back into position for the next shot. Got it. Much better. Let me try it again. Be my guest, Danny. Those shots went low because you're flinching. Give me your gun. What are you going to do? I'm going to load your revolver with some dummy rounds and some live rounds. This should help keep you from anticipating the gun as it goes off. OK, fire one ready. Thanks. My pleasure. Reload. OK, now fire one ready. You're healing the gun, which means you're pushing with a heel of your hand. Just hold it steady and squeeze. Try it again. Much better. Well, that's how it goes. Accuracy continues to improve the more you practice and concentrate on the fundamentals. You're doing well. Doing well indeed. Now that Lee's learned most of the basics of pistol shooting, she's moving on to some more powerful guns. One she might have had a little trouble handling before she began her training. Let's go back to Lee now after she's been shooting a while and watch as she tries a semi-automatic. This must be the carnival end of the range. Well, the targets are different and I think you're going to enjoy shooting them with a semi-automatic. But first, let's go over this. Remember that when you shoot an auto, the slide comes back with each shot. Keep a proper grip, and the slide won't catch your hand accidentally. I see what you mean. It's a lot different from the revolver. OK, now let's go over how to load the automatic. You insert the cartridges into the magazine like this. Oh, but first, don't forget your ear protection. Now, insert the magazine into the magazine well. All right, release the slide with your left hand and chamber around. Like that? Very good. Now put on the thumb safety. We'll try it with one round and see how you do. So release the safety and fire one ready. Aim at one of those pepper poppers.
Good. You remember to put on the safety and you handle the gun just fine. Just remember that the safety is only mechanical and it doesn't replace safe gun handling. Okay. What if I get a new gun and the trigger is really hard to pull back? Well, a new gun will work itself in, but the best thing to do is not to buy a gun unless you can pull the trigger back. <sighs> Makes sense. Okay, let's continue with the auto. Take out the magazine. There's something else you should know. There are two common things an inexperienced person will do while unloading an auto. They forget to fully unload the gun. There's one still in there. All right. Or what's even more common is they pull the slide back, ejecting a cartridge. Then they take out the magazine. They now think the gun is unloaded. There's still one in there. Right. When they let the slide go forward after ejecting the cartridge, it chambers a new cartridge from the magazine. Here's the proper way to do it. Release the magazine and remove it. Push back on the slide, removing the chambered round. Visually inspect the chamber. Now the gun's empty. I am really glad you showed me that since we have an auto at home. Well, I wanted you to see it when we had live ammunition, so you understand how important a point it is. Okay, see how many more of those pepper poppers you can hit. Fire one ready. was great, Lee. For a first timer, you did just fine. Oh, well, it's a fun sport, Mickey, once you get the right training. Hey, I was wondering, how good can a person get at this anyway? Maybe I can show you. That was great. Wow. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. Well, let's call it a day and go over and see what Mike and Jeff are doing. Sure. Wow. Oh, thanks for everything, Mickey. I'm amazed at how much I had to learn. I know what you mean. Well, you did very well, Lee. Thanks. It was fun. Yeah, who knows, Lee? Someday you might get as good as old Jeff here. <laughs> I'd resent that if I wasn't so hungry. Well, I know a little place down the road where we can all go. Listen, Lee, why don't you talk to your husband? We'd be glad to put him through one of our courses. Oh, that'd be great. Then I'd have someone to go shooting with. You know, Lee, I have a couple of friends you might like to meet. Jean Bray and Joanne Hall. They'd probably be happy to go shooting with you. Oh, who are they? Well, Jean Bray's a five-time national pistol revolver champion. Joanne's a world champion and writes a gun column for women shooters. That sounds great. Say, when her husband comes to do the course, you think I could tag along? Sure, Jeff, no problem. Hey, you know what I'm going to do for you? Since you introduced me to these guys. What's that? Give you a few pointers. <laughs> <laughs> After thorough training and instruction with Mickey Fowler and Mike Dalton, Lee discovered that recreational shooting soon became one of her favorite sports. And like anything that one enjoys, she found herself telling her friends about it.
Was that part of the course learning how to clean the guns? Uh huh. It's really easy. And the instructions even come with the kit, see? You have to clean guns to keep the lead and the powder residues out of them so the gun continues to function properly. I kind of like doing it. It's just one of those things you learn on the course, like keeping guns and ammunition secured in a safe place away from children. Boy, you've really learned all about this. I've been meaning to do something like that for a long time. Well, I'll tell you, Marisa, I feel a lot more secure since I took that course. When you own a gun and know nothing about it, that's what's dangerous. You'll see what I mean when you start. Could you give me their number? I'd like to start right away. Yeah, sure. Oh, did I tell you? Oh, hi. Help you with something? I brought my new gun in for some practice. Oh, okay. Let me have some 38 wad cutters, please. Fine. Well, that's a 357. Sure you don't want 357s? I'm only here to practice. Oh. Hi, Lee. Hi, Jean. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Lee. Nice seeing you again. You too. Is that the 357 that you bought? Yeah, I'm really anxious to try it out. Oh, and while you're at it, I'd like to rent that new Smith & Wesson Model 422. Oh, the 22 semi-auto. Yes. Joanne and I just got back from the garment district. We found some really good deals down there. Oh, really? I need to do some shopping for Gary. What did you buy? Well, I found a good coat I've been looking all over for. And I got some great blouses. She won't need that ammunition. I brought some for her. Whatever you say, ladies. <laughs> I have some 22 competition cartridges. You're welcome to them. Thanks. I'll buy lunch. Come on, let's go do some shooting. Then we'll go shopping. gun owner, Lee felt safer in her home until she realized that she had a lot to learn about firearms, their safety and operation. A must for anyone who owns a gun. Whether you're an occasional target shooter or just concerned about home protection, you have a responsibility to learn what you've just seen. The producers urge you to review this tape with your family and friends more than once, but not to consider it a substitute for expert instruction and practice. NRA certified instructors and local shooting ranges can be found by inquiring at nearby gun shops, gun clubs, parks and recreation departments, or the National Rifle Association. We also strongly advise that you check on the laws governing the purchase, use, ownership, possession, and transportation of firearms in your area, as they vary greatly throughout the United States. Shooting can be an enjoyable sport, and firearms can be a lifesaver, as long as they're handled properly. Remember, you're the one who's responsible for gun safety, and practice makes perfect. Good shooting.